Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us for today's webinar. This is Anne Rood with the marketing department. We're going to have Dick Reddy, one of our solutions architects, senior solution architects, to present this morning or this afternoon, depending on where you are. We're going to be talking about nuanced speech recognition, as you can see on the screen, and that includes uh, the personal app assistant application as well as speech directory. So before he gets us going, I'll just let you know a couple of quick things. Uh, we'll make the slides available to you as well as the recording. Look for a follow-up email from us, and we will have time for Q&A at the end, so you can type those in at any time during the session, and we'll have those ready for him. So with that, I'll let Dick get us started. Thanks, Ann. Uh, well, welcome, everybody. We're glad to have you here with us today. Uh, I think this uh, this session today is going to be an interesting one for you. And I, I know that uh, those of you that are already CXE users, uh, CXE customers, Xmedia's Open Text customers, are, are always looking for ways that you can expand the functionality of what you're using our system for. To, to meet other needs, especially these days uh, where everything's kind of in an uproar. Um, and for those that are not our customers yet, um, we, we, we know that one of the things that you do is you evaluate new technologies um, or replacement technologies for things like the nuanced speech attendant uh, solution that you may have. Um, it'd be great if you could find a solution that doesn't just do one thing. Um, you know, the nuance attendant just did speech attendant. That's it. Um, and, and getting something that can do other things for you could be a real advantage. So uh, we're going to get into some of that today, and um, and uh, hopefully you'll you'll it'll be a good hour for you, 45 minutes hour as we uh, as we make it through this. But First, uh, first things first, we wanted to, uh, those that weren't aware, that are used to us as Xmedius, um, Open Text uh, acquired Xmedius uh, back in March, and we are thrilled to be part of the Open Text family now. Uh, Open Text, uh, one of the most uh, well known and well recognized information management and technology companies in the world. Uh, $3 billion company, strong cash reserves, uh, a very strong position in the marketplace, and uh, that strength and far reach of the of open text. Uh, we, we are excited to be part of that uh, and uh, able to bring our solutions uh, with a much wider reach, uh, as well as being able to deliver additional solutions to our existing customers of CXE, the, there's there are a number of other applications within Open Text that uh, we're sure you may find interesting uh, going forward. Uh, as we know, the world has changed this year. Uh, it has been uh, probably one of the greatest upheavals uh, in the world going on with the COVID situation that we're all facing. Um, and uh, along with the 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 human impact uh, that this has had, it has certainly been devastating for many many businesses uh, and had a real dramatic impact uh, on businesses around the world. Um, you know, we've gone from uh, you know on average they say most uh, organizations have. Uh, about 20%, so maybe up to 25% of their employees that work remotely. Um, they, and uh, through the COVID, we've gone from 90%, from 20% you know, or so up to 100% in many cases. Uh, how do you how do you address that? Uh, a lot of the solutions that we've uh, that we've seen implemented have been kind of put together. Now, a little bit with, you know, duct tape and chewing gum, uh, so to speak, because you have to meet an immediate need right away. Uh, and uh, now you're looking for permanent solutions that can really take you forward and not just meet the existing needs of supporting remote workers, but uh, going forward, being able to provide some additional capabilities and functionality, not just what they were doing at at the office, being able to do that at home, but being able to expand that cap the capabilities uh, that they're able to take advantage of, and you know while we're you know somewhere less than a hundred percent today, 
studies have shown that uh, it's estimated that almost half of employees in many um, in many organizations will continue to work remotely um, at least some of the time uh, after after we get past uh, the the significant part of the coronavirus uh, epidemic and pandemic that we're facing today. Uh, so you know, the solutions that you're that you're looking for uh, really have to be something that will take you forward uh, into that new reality that we're all going to be faced with addressing as as we go forward. So one of the one of the things that has had a big impact on the world uh, is speech recognition. Um, it, it, and it, you know why is that? Uh, well. It's, easier to use. <laughs> We're, we've all uh, been talking a lot longer than we've been writing. Um, it, it's much quicker than typing, uh, much uh, much easier to do. Um, and uh, we have a number of solutions available that, uh, that can help address that uh, within the CXE platform. And, you know, quite frankly, all of us are using speech recognition technologies today. It wasn't that long ago where it was the exception rather than the rule that you'd interface with speech recognition technology. But today they're everywhere. Um, it, you know, whether you're calling an airline to get a flight status um, or, you know, many people never touch the remote of their television anymore. Um, they just give a command to Alexa uh, or Google Now or C uh, to be able to control other things within within their home, and all of that is done using speech commands. Um, it's it's really becoming ubiquitous, and um, and finding new ways to utilize uh, speech recognition technologies is one of the things that we've really focused on as a company. Uh, and focus on enabling within the solutions that we offer. Uh, one of the things that's caught, that caught a lot of people by surprise uh, late last year was an announcement from Nuance. Uh, Nuance is the gold standard in speech recognition technologies. Uh, they are widely recognized as the best of the best by a significant margin, margin. In, the, in, in being able to provide uh, speech recognition technology. Um, they announced they're not getting out of the speech recognition technology business. As a matter of fact, they are refocusing and redoubling their efforts on the development of speech, the speech recognition engine that they are so famous for, uh, for developing and offering. They did make an announcement, though, that the application that they wrote to ride on top of that speech recognition engine, um, the, the nuanced speech attendant and open speech attendant, are going away. Um, they announced that at the end of last year, um, expansions went away about six months ago on the system. And uh, support was supposed to end this year, but they've extended that on through next year. Um, but the system, those systems are going away. And um, and you, it, those of you that are utilizing the Nuance Speech Attendant solutions have to find another uh, another application or solution to meet those uh, those application requirements. And uh, we think we have a pretty good uh, offering for that. Um, the CXE. Uh, you know, many of you may already be using CXE as your messaging platform, uh, voice messaging, unified messaging, auto attendance services, things like that. Um, it, our speech recognition, we've written our application on top of that same nuanced speech recognition engine that you've been used to using with your nuanced speech attendant solution. Uh, so the same the same gold standard of speech recognition underlies our application that rides on top of that, um, and uh, we we've been it's been uh, shown to be a pretty good uh, replacement solution for the nuance uh, speech attendant uh, work in virtually any environment that's out there, um, and uh, we've got more experience in this than really anybody else in the marketplace. Uh, nearly 25 years of developing speech recognition applications, almost 40 years of developing auto attendance uh, applications, things like that, um, long time with personal assistance, and I know that may be a new term for many of you, 
Uh, we're going to tell you, we're going to talk about what personal assistant means as we go through this, but um, we've been doing this a long time, really know what we're doing here. Now, one of the things we mentioned a little bit earlier is a lot of organizations, especially those that have been using Nuance um, for their speech attendant application, are looking for a solution that uh, can take that advantage that speech gives them in the auto attendant world and extend that to to other applications. Uh, so they they really like to find an application, a solution that that provides speech recognition that goes beyond just transferring a call. And that's one of the big advantages of CXE and the speech recognition applications that we have developed is they're not just for automated attendance. They're not just a speech attendant application. Um, the speech recognition has really been infused into many of the other applications within a CXE platform. Um, so as we go through this today, we're going to look at how that brings you some significant advantages and allows you to deliver um, some really good solutions to your users and to your organization as a whole that go far beyond what you were able to provide just with the nuanced speech attendant. Having multiple applications that are all integrated together on a single platform under one umbrella has many significant advantages to it. Uh, and, you know, when you think about managing systems, it's a whole lot easier to manage one system that does a number of things than it is to manage four or five separate systems the way you uh, often have to do today. So let's start uh, with the speech attendance uh, the options that are available within CXE, how we can um, replace your existing nuance speech attendance system, if that's what you have, uh, and even provide some additional capabilities. So automated attendance, uh, as we mentioned, we've been doing that for a long time. It was, it was one of the first applications that was available on the CXE platform back in the early 80s when it initially got its start. Uh, so nearly 40 years of continual development of it. Um, they, we, we provide a number of uh, ad, advanced features beyond just a transfer of a call uh, as standard features of the system by adding uh, a, additional optional modules. We can enhance that functionality to things like uh, true IVR uh, functions, allowing callers to interact with backend data. Uh, fax libraries, fax on demand applications where callers can request information to be faxed to them all on a single call. Uh, you, you can create as many menus as you want, um, uh, even question and answer surveys. Um, all of that's available within the system. Uh, very easily to, to, to administer and, and make changes to or create new, um, new auto attendant functions. Much wider and deeper feature set than you'd find uh, within this nuanced speech attendant, whose job really is to just transfer a call, take a name, transfer a call, uh, or really any other competitive solution that you may be looking at. Those auto attendants uh, can be scheduled, a very flexible scheduling of those auto attendants. Um, most organizations will have multiple departments uh, or divisions that require their own unique auto attendants to be built, providing unique greetings, unique options for that particular department. And oftentimes they'll have uh, their own uh, time of day, day of week schedule. That may be due to operating hours, uh, being in different time zones, uh, things like that. Completely flexible scheduling is available in CXE for automated attendant. Um, each auto attendant menu structure has its own independent scheduling, uh, easily supporting multiple time zones and pre-programmed holidays and pre-planned closures are automatically adjusted. So. Uh, when those occur, you can provide a different set of greetings and announcements and options for callers uh, because the work schedule will probably be different for the enterprise during those situations. And for unexpected uh, um, events that happen, weather conditions, things like that, 
we provide multiple ways to do a manual override of the normal schedule. So uh, if you wake up one morning and there's, you know, three feet of snow on the ground, uh, you can easily either by calling in over the telephone or through a simple web interface uh, can easily make uh, changes to this schedule uh, by enabling manual overrides to it. Uh, not having to change anything existing, but uh, but enabling an override on top of that. Um, and you can even delegate those uh, override, the manual override changes to those departments or locations. Uh, so the IT department doesn't have to manage those. You know, an IT department that's based in Miami, Florida, um, may not be keeping track of the weather conditions in Minneapolis. Uh, so having somebody local in Minneapolis that can enable those uh, can be a, a significant advantage for for you as the IT staff in managing the system ongoing. Uh, there's a lot of features within the system um, that, uh, that enhance the speech recognition, things like unlimited aliases for, for users or departments. You know, Robert Smith uh, would be a name in the directory. Uh, it can also be recognized as Bob Smith, Dr. Robert Smith, Professor Robert Smith, Professor Bob Smith. Dr. Bob, uh, whatever our appropriate alias names, uh, unlimited number of alias names can be programmed for any individual user. Uh, extensive duplicate name disambiguation, the directories can be a global directory or can be a segregated directory just for a particular department um, or a, a particular uh, location. Uh, the managing of that directory, uh, that's, I know that's top on the mind for many, uh, many IT departments. How do you keep this database up to date with, with uh, employees moving from location to location, new employees coming in, uh, people leaving the, org the enterprise? Um, it, it can all be manually done, of course, or we do have a number of tools to automate that. Uh, so we can sync up with Active Directory and use that as the gold standard for, for the directory entries. Uh, if you need to synchronize with some other uh, directory source, an HR application or something along those lines, we provide an API to develop uh, so any type of specialized uh, directory synchronization requirements that, that you may have. Um, and, uh, you know, each user, um, you know, in a, in a standard uh, uh, speech attendant, uh, each user has a telephone number programmed for them. And uh, when I call in and I say Robert Smith, um, the system will have a telephone number. Generally, it's a PBX extension um, that that call is transferred to. Um, but each in our system, each user can have multiple telephone numbers associated with them. Uh, and uh, which telephone number is utilized, you can give the user control over that if you want to. Uh, so that uh, if the user is, you know, wants calls directed to their cell phone, or maybe they're going to be working from home today, they can easily go in through a simple uh, web interface and be able to adjust which telephone number is utilized for calls that are going to be transferred to them from the speech attendant. Uh, this, uh, they don't have to call IT department and say, hey, I'm going to be working from home tomorrow. Can you change my telephone number to this or change it to my cell phone? Or they don't have to do uh, off-system forwarding from their, you know, from their PBX extension or something along those lines. They can make it so that when I could say Robert Smith, uh, uh, today it's transferred to his PBX extension. Tomorrow he can he can adjust that, and if I call in then, I'm going to be transferred to his cell phone. All that's transparent to the caller and very easy for the user to be able to control. So a significant enhancement for that you can provide to users, the, the control over which telephone device is used when uh, a call's uh, coming through them through the, uh, through the attendant directory. Now, no, let's take a look at what a normal speech attendant looks like. So this is what you're used to if you have a nuanced speech attendant or if you've utilized uh, another speech attendant uh, uh, in, as you've done business. Uh, you, your you know, calls answered by the system. It says, uh, you know, say the name of the person or the name of the department you want to reach. A name is spoken by the caller, and the system transfers the call and forgets about it. 
It initiates a transfer to the telephone number, the PBX extension generally, and the call's released, and it lets the PBX take care of where that call goes after that. Um, and that's that's fine. We can do that. Uh, we can be set up that way as well. Call's transferred. It's on its way. The PBX handles where call goes next. But uh, as a standard feature of the system, if you're using us not just as a speech attendant, but also using CXE as a um, as your messaging platform as well, we can start expanding uh, the the capabilities of the system. Uh, the first one that's a standard feature of the system is to enable what we call call screening. So the caller calls in, here's the greeting, says John Tyler, and instead of just transferring the call, the system will ask them, who's calling, please? They speak their name, and the call is then transferred um, out, to, uh, out to John Tyler. But when John answers the phone, uh, in, a, in a normal situation, uh, in the standard situation, when John answers the telephone call, he's talking to the caller. Uh, he's got the caller, and the conversation begins at that point. But if you're using call screening when he answers the call, the system will say, you have a call from Mark Reed. Please say accept call or reject call. So what this is kind of an interim step. What's the purpose of that? Well, it gives John Tyler the ability to prioritize what's going on in his world. Um, maybe, maybe John is heads down on a project and he's waiting for some information, somebody to call him with information, uh, but he doesn't want to be interrupted with other calls uh, at that time. Turning on call screening means that when he answers the phone, he can prioritize, not that the call is unimportant, uh, but that he can prioritize what is more important at that particular moment. Is the work he's doing right now more important than Mark's call? Well, if it is, then he can just reject the call, hang up, and uh, Mark's taken back to told that uh, John was unavailable and be offered the option to leave a message, try someone else. Um, but if Mark's the person he was waiting to call back, he can accept the call, and then the call will be cut through. So it gives the user a little more control over what's going on in their day and how they're able to handle calls. They can intelligently handle those calls. Now, speaking of it from the caller's point of view, having this the speech application uh, work uh, infused into many of the other applications of CXE means that their experience is going to be consistent throughout their entire connection to the system. Uh, so, you know, when they come back, they're, you know, they're presented with, uh, with speech options, uh, not only before leaving a message, but also after leaving the message. Uh, so it's a very consistent interface for the callers, allowing them to, uh, to, to feel much more comfortable being in the system, um, rather than just feeling like they're, you know, they're, they're they don't have any control over the situation. Very consistent interface is presented to them all, all along the way. So let's uh, let's take this a step further. That's the, the auto attendant part of it, speech attendant part of it. But let's take a look at what personal assistant means. Uh, and when you think of uh, you know a personal assistant, you're thinking of a person that sits there and kind of helps manage things for you, uh, gives you gets you access to information. Uh, handles your calls for you, uh, knows where you are and what you're doing and what calls are important to get through and which ones are not important and can be handled otherwise. Um, and that's what the, spe the speech enabled personal assistance uh, in CXE provides for you. Uh, it gives you as the user uh, the access to uh, much of the backend information that may be difficult to get to or in the case of the graphic shown here, dangerous to get to. You don't want to be picking up your phone and navigating through your calendar or your contacts or things like that uh, while you're driving down the road. That's just, it's illegal most places and it's just foolish uh, unless you enjoy being wrapped around a telephone pole. Um, it, having a speech attendant means that you can um, that you can uh, just tap your Bluetooth, say call call voicemail, it rings into the system, and you can get to your messages. You can 
You can interact with your calendar and your contacts and all through simple speech commands that are uttered. Here's a couple of examples. Uh, we talked about, remember we talked about that call screening before. So uh, Mark Reed called in and asked for John Tyler. We asked his name. Um, and John was presented with the option to accept or reject the call. Um, with personal assistant, they're offered, the user is offered more options to be able to handle that call. So instead of just saying you have a call from Mark Reed, please say accept call or reject call. The system says offers more options, the ability to uh, transfer the call to somebody else um, or to one of their other devices. Uh, to, if they didn't quite catch the name, they can have ask for that name to be repeated to them. Uh, acknowledge is one that has been tremendously beneficial uh, to many of our customers and to myself personally as well. And what this does, uh, maybe you want to communicate information back to Mark, but you don't want to you don't want to be connected to Mark. You don't want to have a conversation with him. You just want to be able to communicate information back to them. So. You know, say you're walking down the hall and getting ready to walk into a meeting. Uh, you, you know you're going to be late for the meeting if you talk to Mark, but you can record an acknowledgement message and say, hi, Mark, I'm walking into a meeting and we'll call you back when I get out in about an hour. You hang up the phone and walk into your meeting. The system goes back to Mark and says, I'm sorry, John Tyler was not available, but recorded a brief message for you and we'll play that message back to the caller. Um, and then give them the option of leaving you a message, trying someone else, uh, whatever. Um, uh, get, really enhancing your ability to communicate with those that are trying to reach you uh, without having the full interruption of an entire conversation uh, going on. Um, as we talked about, you can manage your messages. Um, they get to access to your voice messages, your email messages, uh, optionally your fax messages as well. Um, notice at the end of this message, this is an email message from, uh, from Mark Reed. Um, listen to the message and, uh, since Mark was in this person's contacts, Instead of, uh, in, instead of just listening to the email message read to them, they can say call back and the system will initiate a telephone call to the telephone number that you have in the contact uh, card for Mark Reed. Um, even though this was an email message, uh, it matched that on the back end. You can get access to your calendar. Um, uh, maybe you want to triage your day as, as you're coming into the office and you call in and you say, get my calendar for today. And it could, will go and uh, read your calendar to you uh, for that day to triage your day on the way into the office. And get access to your contact information, um, uh, either having it verbally read to you or to place a telephone call or to send an email message, a voice message as an email to somebody outside your organization. Um, and, you know, I was able to use just about all of these one time uh, when I was uh, driving from my home in Tulsa down to Dallas. Uh, I was driving down the highway and my phone beeped saying I had a new message. Um, instead of picking up my phone and at 75 miles an hour on the turnpike navigating through my messages, I simply tapped my Bluetooth and said, call voicemail. It called into the CXE system. I logged in, I was into my mailbox. Um, I said, get new messages. And the message was from my boss, uh, an email message saying, hey, we need to talk about uh, this project. I simply said, call back. It called out to my boss. We, cared, we talked for a while, uh, decided we needed to get together with a couple other people and talk a little bit more about this particular project. When my boss hung up, I was right back in my mailbox. So the call was bridged through CXE, and I was able to uh, be right back in my mailbox. Uh, my boss had told me he was free all day next Tuesday. Uh, so I simply said, um, get my calendar for next Tuesday. It went out, read my calendar. I found a hole in my calendar, and I said, create a new meeting for next Tuesday at 2 p.m. for 60 minutes. I recorded an introduction 
and then I spoke the names of the people that I wanted to invite to that. Some of them were inside internal people, some of them were outside people from my contacts. And the system then through, uh, through uh, Exchange sent out a meeting request on my behalf with all the information that I said. So I took about 10 or 15 minutes on a single telephone call, listened to my messages, talked to my boss, checked my calendar, and created a new meeting request. All of that without taking my eyes off the road, my hands off the wheel, um, very safely and easily was able to take care of all of that using the personal assistance uh, capabilities of the CXE platform. Tremendous benefit. I would have had to take, take gotten off the road to, uh, to read the message, um, take my, uh, it, you know, call my boss, hang up from my boss, look down at my phone again, navigate through my calendar, and create a new meeting request. That way, I would have been off the road for 20 or 30 minutes. Um, this way, I was able to very quickly and easily handle all of that using simple, consistent uh, speech commands uh, within the system. Only had to make one call, even though I was able to talk to the system and to my boss and back into the system, uh, all with one telephone call. Administration, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Um, you can create as many administrators as you want in the system for any type of manual updates. Uh, or changes and adjustments that you need to make. Uh, we do support single point of administration with a number of uh, third-party systems like Unimax Second Nature, uh, Starfish, uh, uh, and uh, like I said, we have an API available for specific needs, um, an integration into uh, a synchronization with Active Directory using a, power, a specialized PowerShell script that we've developed uh, batch editing, things like that are, um, are all available through the, uh, the CXC platform, uh, making your job as an IT staff uh, much easier uh, to go through. And we work in any environment. I mean, uh, virtually any environment that's out there integrating with, uh, with virtually any telephony environments, um, using any type of uh, protocol that's out there for connecting to the PBX. We don't, the system doesn't just have to be SIP enabled. We can work with 15, 20 year old PBXs if, if you may have to happen to be in that environment. Uh, and we simultaneously integrate to multiple PBXs. So if through mergers and acquisitions, your organization has grown such that you've got uh, You've got a Navaya uh, at the main office. You acquired another company that was using uh, Microsoft Skype for business, enterprise telephony, and another one that had um, a, a ribbon PBX and a, an Alcatelucent, and then you just acquired a Cisco company. All of those different PBXs can integrate simultaneously with a single CXE platform, making it much, uh, much easier and more consistent for the user experience, regardless of where they are and what their particular telephony platform uh, looks like. Let's talk about a customer that we've uh, that we have um, that is using our speech technology, uh, Navy Peer. Um, a very familiar name to to many people. Um, a large attraction uh, gets nearly 10 million visitors annually to the Navy Pier. Um, been around for a long time, uh, well north of 100 years, uh, and um, they they chose us for a number of reasons. Uh, the mo the mo uh, they really needed the mobility uh, user experience because uh, their their people were always running around the the property, um, taking care of things. Sometimes they're at the desk, sometimes they're uh, running around the property, and the first you know they were only available on their cell phone. Sometimes they'd even be working from home. Uh, having that, that level of control over the system was vital to them. The speech directory and speech enabled auto attendance uh, was, was tremendous for them, being able, to, um, being able to get their callers to be able to get the information and get connected um, very quickly and easily was a huge, tremendous uh, benefit for them. And, you know, migrating from a premise-based exchange server to Office 365. We've been integrating to Office 365 for more than a decade now. 
uh, longer experience than anybody else in the marketplace in providing unified messaging solutions into Office 365 um, using the latest security uh, protocols, uh, native security protocols from Microsoft and Exchange. Um, uh, so uh, it was a tr just the right fit for Navy Peer, uh, you know, checked off all of their particular checkboxes um, that they had and uh, has been a, a, a great customer of ours for many, many years now. So why do you want to use speech? I mean, we've been talking about it this whole time. Um, you know, enabling your speech directories, uh, the personal assistant, uh, speech-enabled personal assistant for your mobile users, um, it, making them safer and, uh, you know, more legal <laughs> wherever they happen to be. Um, and a permanent long-term solution, uh, regardless of the rest of the changes within your environment. Um, you know, if, if you are in one particular PBX today, but you're going to migrate to something else tomorrow, um, that our ability to handle that through the transition and with the new uh, new platforms that you're moving to, um, it really can be a tremendous benefit to you. Um, and you can see a, a quote there from the director of IT at Navy Pier on the benefit that CXE uh, provided to to them. So there you go. Um, I, I'll turn it back over to Anne here and see if we have any questions in the queue that uh, that we can answer for you. Okay, absolutely. There are a couple, and if you haven't found it, there's a Q and A box on your menu option. You can type them in the chat too. I have um, I have that open if you haven't already submitted your questions. So the first one, Dick, is uh, what languages are supported in the speech directory? Yeah, that's great. We we uh, can support up to five simultaneous languages. We are a multilingual system. Um, it, so, uh, it, you know, the, the most common ones like, uh, you know, it, North American English and French Canadian and North American Spanish, uh, European Spanish and French, German, Swedish. Um, uh, we have a number of languages available uh, on the system and you can have up to five of them uh, simultaneously running on the system. And even handling things like, um, you know, I mentioned European French and French Canadian. Those are, you know, similar languages. They can understand each other, but there are nuances that are different between the two. Um, you know, Australian English versus North American English versus UK English. We have separate uh, language packs for each one of them so that uh, you can, um, it, it, we can really, that really helps enhance the success rate of speech recognition when you can really use the the specific dialect that's uh, that's going to be for the for the callers um, that are coming in. So, okay, good. Next question: Can a caller still dial an extension, or do they have to use speech? Oh, uh, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so, uh, oftentimes, speech attendants are just that speech attendants, and you got to use the speech to get there. Uh, no, you can use, uh, there's nothing that uh, precludes you from uh, setting up the system to use DTMF only, speech only, or a combination of speech and DTMF. Uh, so then you, you have complete flexibility in that regard uh, to make it really meet the needs of what you're trying to accomplish with that particular menu structure that you're building. Okay, good. Next, um, and this one you may want to clarify from the beginning as far as what nuance is discontinuing. So this question is, do you already have a vendor that will replace the nuance speech engine? So I guess if you want to clarify yeah. the speech engine versus the speech attendant software from you. Yeah, yeah. So, sorry if I wasn't clear on that uh, at the beginning. Um, yeah, the nuance has no intention of, uh, of discontinuing the underlying speech recognition engine. That is, uh, I mean, that is the core of their company and their um, and the solutions that they offer. Uh, what they are discontinuing is their application of speech attendant that they wrote to ride on top of that engine. Um, so we are, we also use the the underlying engine that comes from Nuance. Uh, as I mentioned, it's widely considered to be the gold standard of speech recognition. Uh, capabilities, and uh, that is still going to continue on 
uh, for the foreseeable future. Nuance is not discontinuing that underlying engine, and we have no plans to discontinue using it within our app, within our solution. Okay, thanks for the clarification. That question actually came in a couple times here. And I know I've heard as well, um, we have had, there are CXE customers that were using the Nuance speech attendant, right? And so now they're, now they're able to convert that over to the CXC speech, correct? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, it, and for those that are using both CXC and the Nuance speech attendant, this is a tremendously cost-effective solution because you're just adding some existing license, some new licensing to your existing CXC platform. You're not having to purchase a, an entirely separate platform. And uh, by speech enabling your CXE system to take over the functionality that was provided by the Nuance Speech Attendant, uh, you're also able to provide a number of the other additional capabilities beyond just answering a call and transferring it um, that we talked about uh, in our time here together. So, yeah, that's a very, very cost-effective uh, option for you guys that uh, have both Nuance Speech Attendant and CXE. Okay, excellent. And one other question, it didn't come in, but I'll ask it anyway, because we've had this question before. Um, as far as the personal assistant speech, Dick, now that is, mm -hmm. you can determine on your system, you can turn that on for a certain number of users, and then other users can remain with the standard DTMF options. Is that correct? Yeah, that's, that's, that's very true. Our uh, CXE is a very, our licensing is very a la carte. So, uh, there's very little in the system that's a one-size-fits-all. So you only add the licensing for users or applications that require that functionality. So everybody doesn't have to have personal assistant. It doesn't make sense for everybody to have personal assistant, to be honest with you. You have a, a significant number of people that come in. They sit at their desk at 8 o'clock, and they go home at 5 o'clock, and they're they're not – running around from place to place. So personal assistant may not make sense for those individuals. So yeah, you can license and enable and disable a lot of the functionality on a user by user basis within the system. Okay, good. All right, well, uh, those are all the questions that came through. So we'll go ahead and get ready to wrap it up. And thanks for the reminder here, Dick. Uh, we'll let you know now that we're part of Open Text. Uh, we, you are all invited to join us for Open Text World, which is a, a virtual event that is going to be happening later this month. And there are specific sessions that are uh, for the Xmedia's products, so both the CXC product as well as the XM Facts product. Uh, both will be on the agenda, so uh, you can find more information at the link. Um, you'll see a banner as well if you just go to opentext.com. You'll see the Open Text World link there, and um, anyone, partners, customers, prospects, whoever you are out there, you're welcome to join us for that event. Um, if you're interested in registering, we'd love to have you both uh, join our sessions, but also um, just learn to learn more about Open Text. As Dick mentioned, we're now part of the organization, and I believe um, Dick also is doing a presentation for one of those sessions, so yep. you won't want to miss one. that. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, so we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Thanks again for joining everyone, and thanks especially to those who submitted questions. Thanks, Dick, for presenting. And as I mentioned at the beginning, we will send out the follow-up email with a link to these slides and a link to the recording. And um, we'll go ahead and uh, shut it off here, and just I'll wish you all a great day, and thanks again for taking the time. Thanks, everybody.